from the University of North Dakota, this is Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Hello and welcome to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy. Sellout, rowdy crowds are the standard at the Ralph. Most left Friday's game wondering what happened as UND or UNO wins 8-4. The Sioux rebounded nicely though Saturday with a wild third period and get a split with a 4-2 win. Got a full lineup for you today. What defines a good teammate? Sometimes it's more than what you see on the ice. Brent Davidson is a guy who just keeps on giving his best on and off the ice. We'll profile him later in the show. And he may be the most identifiable former Sioux player ever. NCAA Stanley Cup champion Eddie the Eagle Bill Four sits down with us to talk about his days at UND on our feature story. Stick around, Coach Hackstall is going to give us his take on last weekend's games with Nebraska Omaha. But before we talk to the coach, we have a question for you. Who was the only player to be named an All-American every year he played for the Sioux? That answer and more when we come back. You're watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Voller Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Fighting Sioux Women's Hockey takes on Minnesota State Friday, January 28th and Saturday the 29th at the Ralph. Both games get underway at 7.07 p.m. Purchase your tickets today. We are North Dakota. Jumping, bass is pumping. Look at the girl in your heart start stumping. Says she wanna dance to a different group. Now you know what to do to cross the move. Just bust the move. Yeah. Hurry in because smartphones talk free. Until January 30th, add a smartphone to a family share plan and share minutes free. This is going to have a $300 million impact. North Dakota Spirit, the campaign for the University of North Dakota. Join us. Before the break, we asked you, who is the only player to be named an All-American every year he played for the Sioux? The answer is Bill Steenson. He was an All-American all three years he played. The others were three-time All-Americans, but played for four years. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with UND head coach Dave Hackstall. Coach, uh, you played with Greg Johnson, and you were a little surprised that he wasn't, uh, he wasn't the answer to that trivia question. Well, I thought he was an All-American all four years, because I know he had a great freshman year coming in. He should have been a Hobie Baker winner, too. Well, he, uh, he certainly was a great player uh, in, in a couple of those years, and uh, I think had a great chance to win it and would have been deserving. We're stalling before we get to Friday night's game against Nebraska Omaha. <laughs> well, we'd probably like to skip it, but we can't do that. We've got to, uh, we've got to face it head on and, uh, and get through it. Well, let's look at the uh, highlights, if you will, from that one. Another packed crowd uh, at the Ralph uh, for Nebraska Omaha. And Coach Dean Blaze making his return to Larink as a college coach. And uh, they got off to a fast start in the first period. Uh, second Friday in a row, you get down 2 nothing. Just can't let that happen, kids. No, we gave up another power play goal early. This one was on a little bit of the bounce of the puck. It wasn't a sloppy penalty kill by us, but uh, same result. And then uh, you made a comeback in the third period for sure, and back to get it to 7-4 to four at one point. And I was thinking, if you get that to 7-5, to five, uh, this might get a little interesting. But you started making some plays in the third period. Well, we did. We were sleeping through the second period, and uh, we turned one mistake into another uh, with, uh, with some poor discipline, some poor penalty killing. 
and uh, just uh, you know we weren't able to get through that you know that uh, that time period. Uh, we tried to make it a game in the third period, but we dug ourselves way too deep of a hole. Uh, you know, had we been able to get one more to get it to 7-5 with about seven or eight minutes to go, you never know, but uh, simply uh, put ourselves in too deep of a hole. Three five on three goals and Brasco Omaha scored uh, in that game and it's, just, it's tough to defend that to start with, but uh, when they come bang, bang, bang like that makes it even tougher, doesn't it? Yeah, we, we put ourselves in an impossible situation. Very, uh, very poor presence, uh, you know, very uh, poor discipline on our part, especially on a night where uh, you know, things weren't happening for us on uh, on the penalty kill. Some nights, you, you know, out of one five on three, you can build some momentum with a good kill. Uh, but with the way we went about our business on Friday, we gave ourselves no chance. Then on Saturday night, uh, I know that uh, it was something, 12 goals in the game, the eight goals. I mean, there's all kinds of marks that were set in that one. Uh, you guys were a little more determined on Saturday night to come out with a better start. Well, there's no question. I mean, there's a there's a ton of soul searching going on, you know, in that 24 hours following Friday night's game, and uh, it's a real hard experience to go through, especially uh, going through that in front of our hometown fans. Uh, but whether you go through that at home or on the road, it uh, it knocks you uh, right down uh, to the bare bones, and you have to rebuild and really uh, gut check yourself from there. And we did that. It was a it was a tough sledding game. I mean, things didn't come easy to us. But we played hard and grounded out in the first two periods. You know, giving up that shorthanded goal uh, in the third period put us in, in a tough position. But we had a couple great plays by a couple great players, and that dug us out of the hole. And uh, those could be game, not only game changing, but season changing plays for us. But well, you got a jump start from Evan Trupp on this one. He blocks the shot, comes in and makes a great shot. And uh, beats their goaltender. That ties the game up. That was a huge goal. Well, I was, uh, you know, there's a save before that by Aaron Dell. That save and Evan Trump's play could be, as I said, season changing type of plays for us. And at that situation, when you're down one to nothing uh, in that game, you've already lost the night before, guys could panic a little bit. They didn't. They seemed to just have a little more drive in the final. Yeah, we, we didn't panic. There was no panic, uh, but things were not coming easy to us. And, you know, and digging ourselves out of a little bit of funk that we've been in, you know, indicative of, uh, of the Friday night performance, doesn't happen overnight. But Saturday night and the way the performance happened, the way we ended up getting the win uh, was a good start for us and gives us a chance now to go back to work, work extremely hard and continue digging our way out of this funk. And a season split with Nebraska Omaha. Coming up, we're going to check out the standings of the WCHA with a change at the top. And this guy's trophy case is loaded with eight NHL All-Star plaques, an NCAA ring, a Stanley Cup ring, hey, throw in a Calder and a few Jennings trophies. What the heck, an All-American plaque as well. A visit with Eddie Belfort is coming up on our feature story. That's it. The play is under review. Hey, take a look at this. This online course is awesome. Yeah, I gotta see that again. Yeah, I've been snowboarding for 16, 17 years. I just enjoy going out, getting a trick and just getting it dialed so you can just stomp it every time. You'll have days where everything's just clicking and you're able to just land everything you try. I don't even like stopping to eat. When you're riding and everything's going well, you feel invincible. Just seeing me out on the hill and riding and just having a good time, they're gonna come in here and know that I know what I'm talking about. It makes a big difference with the customers. I'm Wade Fisher from Shields. information about summer hockey camps, go to FightingSue.com or call 701-777-6595. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where graduates succeed, where ideas are born, and research is driven by imagination. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, 
spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Well, he may go down in NHL history as one of the all-time great goaltenders. Ed Belfour was recently inducted into the UND Letter Winners Association Hall of Fame. And even though he only played one year for the Fighting Sioux, Ed Belfour considers that year to be pivotal in his shaping of his NHL career. And the fans of both teams now rise to give their competitors a standing ovation as the freshman Ed Belfour surveys the situation. This is a touch of class. This is where I wanted to play and, and uh, start my career. And just getting the opportunity to come and play here was a, a dream come true uh, in the first place. Herkes has Ian Kidd breaking in. Kidd to Herkes. Herkes scores! Joyce! Bobby Joyce! And just like that, it is three to nothing. Fighting two. You know, it was just a great year and, and uh, 40 wins, eight losses, and they call this the dream team, so it really was. You know, just coming here that year was, um, you know, so much fun, and I enjoyed the challenge. I uh, had, you know, obviously a great team, a uh, real competitive team, and, uh, you know, without those guys, uh, you know, you don't get the opportunity to do the things in your career that I did. So, very thankful to my teammates. For North Dakota, shadowed by Shabiki. Perrin gets it, and it's onside. This is Bobic, the backhand. He scores! You know, we had the, the best coaching staff that I had throughout my career, so you know, I think that's a, a huge asset that we, we had and the reason why we won. Speeding away, hit on goal, he shoots and Balfour able to make the save and smother the rebound. And the crowd loves Eddie the Eagle coming up big. Coming from a school like uh, University of North Dakota where, where uh, tradition and pride and, and family is so important, uh, you kind of lose that a little bit at uh, the NHL level, it's a business and you know, you're know you only as good as your last game or, or sometimes a practice. So you have to be you know the best you can be every day. And Belfour has proved now that he's a great goalie. We all know he's been a great goalie through his career. Without the University of North Dakota and, and the program here and uh, my coaches and teammates, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to, to move on and win a Stanley Cup and, and have an NHL career. Uh, so, you know, I'm thankful to them and, and everybody involved in the program at the time. Want to know what kind of guy Ed Belfour is? Just check out the Make-A-Wish Foundation logo on the chin of the mask that he wore. Belfour becomes eligible for NHL Hockey Hall of Fame this year. Well, Denver takes over the top spot in the WCHA, but by the slimmest of margins. And when all is said and done, what was the key point in Saturday's win over UNO? That along with a little Trump magic coming up when Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey continues. This is a place where innovation abounds, a place where dreams come true, a place where creativity is a way of life. A place that fires our soul. Join us for the North Dakota Spirit Campaign. Together, we will shape the future of UND and North Dakota. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Dream. 
dreams are forged. Character is tested. Teams are united. Champions win here. Watch the crowning of a new NCAA Men's Frozen Four champion April 7th and 9th on ESPN and ESPN2 in high definition. For information, visit NCAA.com slash Frozen Four. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. I'm Tim Hennessy with head coach Dave Hackstall. And that movement in the WCHA standings we saw Hack is going to continue on probably till the last weekend. I well, guess. it's going to be, I'm, uh, I would think it's going to be a tight race, a close race, and a, a hard fought race all the way down till the end. You needed a win Saturday night. You got a win. It all started a battle for two periods. Uh, scoreless hockey. They get a shorthanded goal. They're up one nothing. Here's the save of the of the night for sure. Yeah, it is. It's save of the night, the save of the weekend, and as I said, that that type of a save can be a season-changing save when you look at uh, the battle that we were in Saturday night and how important the win was for us. And then Evan Trout, how does he pull this stuff off? Well, he's just things that uh, Evan does on a daily basis. He's so creative, uh, you know. And you see here, it's not just a slow play. He's moving his feet. Uh, he's just he's just such a creative player. And, you know, the, the great thing was the fans immediately recognized yeah. what he had done. Yeah, they certainly did. Then he gets this opportunity, and the biggest goal of the game uh, was the first goal for you blocking that shot at the point. He gets hooked, and he, as you mentioned, keeps his feet moving. Kept his feet moving, got the shot blocked, fought through the hook, and, uh, you know, it's a real quick speed play. He's got back pressure. The only thing he can do is shoot that puck and he puts it the one place that it uh, can find the back of the net. And he knows how big that goal was by his enthusiasm after he scored. Well, right right in behind the save uh, again. That's uh, that's a huge play uh, in the game and in the weekend. Now this has got two phases to it this play. Ben Blood's pass first of all with the lob pass to uh, to Jason Gregoire. He measured that like yeah. he would a wedge shot or something. Well, and not only that, Ben brought that puck from nearly down on our goal line rather than just dumping it out, chipping it out or panicking with that puck. He skated it, took it as ice and then made a great, you know, that play doesn't work out all that often, but he made the perfect play, and Jason made uh, no mistake uh, even, you know, fighting through the hook and making a great play. you got to have some great hands for to make that play. Number one, to get that puck settled, and number two, to go from his forehand to his backhand to his forehand so quick in front with somebody yeah. checking him. Real real good wow. strength just to fight off the, the check uh, from the defenseman, and then real good poise just making that play in tight, quick hands to, uh, to bring it back on his back and to his forehand and put it in the net. We talked about the save by Aaron Dell being a key play in the game for sure when you're down one to nothing. And you had said all along when Aaron Dell was playing so well that, you know, if you think there's not going to be a hiccup along the way somewhere, there's going to be. And maybe that was his hiccup on Friday night. Well, he had, you know, he had a tough night. He, he wasn't finding the puck on Friday night. And that's something, that's probably the first thing that you notice in Aaron Dell's game. He finds pucks through traffic and he does a great job with those pucks coming through and the rebounds and he just wasn't able to do that on Friday night. He got back on track Saturday. He certainly did and Brad Eisness, uh, in his defense, tough situation for him to come in on. Well, about the most difficult situation that you can have coming into a game, down, uh, down by four, team not playing well and on consecutive five on three opportunities against. Now, a couple of uh, positive things, certainly, obviously, the win, but I thought Derek Forbert's performance uh, in, improved from what it had been, and uh, of course, having Jason Gregoire back and maybe at peak performance for him on the weekend. Yeah, I thought Jason got back to, you know, the level that we expect out of him, and, and he did it fairly quickly coming off the long-term uh, injury and layoff. Yep. Uh, Derek Forbert going back to the, le uh, the left side, I thought had a real good battle level and was, uh, was pretty efficient on Saturday night, so that's a good sign for us. And the one thing we didn't mention, and that was Mario Lammer, who called out uh, uh, Tony Turgeon, and a lot of people thought you're taking him, uh, he was taking himself out of, out of the lineup uh, for some reason. He was defending his teammate, Derek Forbert, who got elbowed by Tony Turgeon. Well, we felt it was a, it was a high hit, and, and it wasn't yeah. something that was discussed on our bench, but uh, certainly our players felt that it was a high hit, and, uh, and uh, that didn't go over very well. Uh, Mario went out and did what he had to do, uh, he did it on the spur of the moment. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't something that he thought too much about. It was during the play, and it happened. And uh, as it turns out, you know, that's a that's a good play for our team and a great show of what kind of a teammate Mario Lamoureux is. It's one of those things, isn't it, that that is unspoken on the bench or in the locker room. Well, and it uh, it, it builds and. Uh, 
you know, strengthens a team as you go through a, a season when those types of things uh, happen for a team. All right, thanks, Coach. Just how does someone go from getting cut by his junior team one year to playing D1 hockey at North Dakota? Brent Davidson explains his road to UND and our player profile. We'll get to that, but first, a look back in our Fighting Sioux history. He won two NCAA titles at UND and scored the game-winning goal in overtime for a WCHA playoff championship. But where is Peter Armbrust now? We'll have that answer and more when we come back. When the dog beats go like this. For information about summer hockey camps, go to FightingSue.com or call 701-777-6595. The 2011 Red Baron WCHA Final Five returns to the XL Energy Center March 17th through the 19th with two new teams in the WCHA Conference. The tournament is now six teams strong. Plus, you can catch a Minnesota Wild game on Saturday afternoon when the Wild take on Columbus, followed by WCHA Fan Fest and the championship game of the tournament Saturday night. Visit XLEnergyCenter.com or stop on by the XL Energy Center box office. As summer is left behind, fall brings new adventures. Make them better with a vehicle from Dahlstra Motors. Whatever adventures come your way, Dahlstrom can make the difference in making your life a smooth ride. you got to be prepared out there. The conditions can be very demanding. It's not easy heading out in the winter. You're facing altitude, wind, snow, and changes in temperature. All your layers and accessories have to work together. You need gear that's up to the challenge. But you need styles that are up to date. Experience of training can make all the difference. My training is really helpful to the customers. I'm Zach Angus. And I'm Melissa Langsa. And we're experts in cold weather gear at Shields. The answer to our where are they now question, Peter was back for the tribute to the 2000 championship team last winter. With the 2000 championship team, Peter Armbrust of Edina, Minnesota. While hard work helps you in athletics as well as academics. Brent Davidson was given the most improved player award his freshman year and has been on the all academic team the past two years. Let's check in with the Sioux senior forward. With North Dakota senior defenseman forward Brent Davidson. Brent, uh, we want to get a little picture on uh, how you got to North Dakota, University of North Dakota, how your hockey playing career started. First of all, where are you from? Morton, Manitoba. Uh, started playing minor hockey up there. Me and uh, Che Ganaway grew up together. Played minor hockey, uh, played high school hockey for Morton Collegiate, and then went to Winnipeg for a year and a half with the Winnipeg Saints, and then another year and a half with the Nipah Natives, and then found my way down here. Were you better than Che back then? Uh, no. <laughs> he's, Don't even hesitate on that no, one, huh? No, I got to give him credit. He's, uh, he's always been better, a better athlete than me, but uh, I'll always say that I got the height on him, and I like that. Yeah, if you could catch him, you could do some damage, right? Yeah, well, as long as I can catch him, one of these days I will. Did you always want to play? I mean, hockey, the road gets tough sometimes, and don't you start second-guessing yourself? Uh, you do. Yeah, I know in uh, my grade 11 year, I broke my femur and dislocated my knee playing hockey, so it was kind of a rough patch there, not knowing what I was going to do. I had to kind of look at options, and after my high school year, I did get cut from the Winkler Flyers, and then uh, luckily found a home at Winnipeg Saints, so it was kind of a, you know, dark patch of time there and uh, luckily I found uh, found an alternative road and now I'm here. You won't give up will you? Uh, hopefully not, never will. With all this uh, stuff that we have here, the people, the players, you know, it's it's a great atmosphere down here. Play a little hockey, you play a little golf as well, right? Yeah, big into golf, uh, working over at Ray Richards here on campus and uh, having a lot of fun there and trying to golf as much as possible. Did you play a lot of golf when you were young as well or in other sports? Uh, well, I'm 23 right now, and I've been working at a golf course since I was 10 years old, so I've been golfing every summer. Why the college route? Uh, for me, uh, I was at the age like 16, 17, I wasn't good enough to go to the WHL, 
so I kind of had to go to the juniors in uh, Manitoba so that kind of opens up doors for college and you know I'm big into the school side as well so to get an education and play hockey for an extra four years is huge for me. A lot of the guys are really are clueless what they're going to do after their hockey playing career is over. How about you? Uh, well, ideally, I'd love to like open up my own like hockey academy business like they have here. I'm um, getting a degree in entrepreneurship after this year. Uh, I'd like to give back to the community and uh, train young athletes. Brent, uh, best of luck. Thanks for visiting with us, and we look forward to the season. Right, thanks, Tim. Davidson is leaving his mark all over Grand Forks. He gives his time to the School for the Blind, Special Olympics, and is involved in children's reading programs at the schools and the public library. After six straight at the Ralph, the Sioux hit the road to Colorado Springs. Coach Hatzfall talks about the CC Series next. Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Valor Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. That is a great online course. Women's Hockey takes on Minnesota State Friday, January 28th and Saturday the 29th at the Ralph. Both games get underway at 7.07 p.m. Purchase your tickets today. We are North Dakota. Studio One is a television show produced by staff and students at the University of North Dakota. Here you actually get to do your own stories and you get to go out and talk to people and interview and learn about the cameras and everything that goes into like a live television production. I mean, it's incredible. Give it a try. I mean, even if you're not broadcasting communications major, anything, I mean, it's worth it. Welcome back to Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey with head coach Dave Haxtall. I'm Tim Hennessy. Coach, on the road, Colorado College this weekend, WCHA series. Kind of nice sometimes to get on the road. You spent a good portion of the first half of the season on the road, but the last six or seven weeks you've been at home. Nice to get on the road a little bit. Yeah, I think it's good timing for us, and I think we need the challenge of going on the road. And uh, coming off of uh, this past weekend, good win on Saturday night. Uh, we need a great week of practice and then uh, go in, uh, like I said, with a big challenge in CC in their building. A uh, team that skates real well and is playing well. I'm not even going to talk to you really about them because I'm guessing you'll pay more attention to what your team is doing. Well, I think we have to at this point in time. Uh, you know, coming off of uh, our last couple of weeks, we've got to have a great focus. And CC was on a great run before Christmas, stumbled a little bit after Christmas, and seems to be back on track now after the weekend last weekend against Alabama Huntsville. Good luck in the Springs. Thanks for watching Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey. If you have a question or a comment for the coach or about the show, send us an email at hockeyshow at und.edu. On behalf of Coach Hackstall and the Sioux Hockey team, we thank all of our fans for watching. We'll see you next week on Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey.